Yo, what's up? This is Patrick. I'm a PM on the Power BI team. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with paginated reports in Power BI. Okay, paginated reports. Man, what a journey it's been for SSRS and the whole product. Um, I remember back, oh, in SQL, in 2003, SQL Server 2000, Service Pack 4, when I first introduced it, the install, the first time I installed it was from a command line, but once I got it up and going, man, I started deploying paginated reports everywhere. And now, paginated reports can be hosted not only in SQL Server reporting services and Power BI report server, but also in the Power BI service. <clears throat> I've been waiting for this for so long. I'm so excited about this. The first requirement though, what you gotta do is either go out and buy a Power BI embedded capacity in Azure, an A4, A5, or an A6, or you can buy a premium capacity, a different type, a P1, P2, or P3, and either one you can host your paginated reports, all right? So once you get that done, wait, 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 you guys know how I like to do, right? Instead of all this talking, let's head over to my laptop. So once you get the capacity purchase, you would go to the admin portal, and in the admin portal, you'll see your capacity settings here. You need to have access to the capacity. I was given administrative access to this capacity by my good friend, Chris Finland. Thanks, Chris. And then what you do is you click the capacity itself, and then you'll see some properties that you'll need to configure. If you go down the workloads, you'll see a section down here dedicated to paginated reports. You need to allocate a certain percentage of the memory from that capacity for paginated reports. In this case, we've allocated 25%, the most that paginated can report, the max memory usage for paginated reports is 25%. So once you get that done, you make sure that prop, that you click apply, and then you go over and create a workspace. All you need to do is click create app workspace. I would use V2, click advance, and assign some capacity to it, all right? If there was multiple capacities, you can click the drop down and see all the capacities that you had access to. Once that's done, I already have a, um, a workspace created. So we'll go over to my workspace. I think I called it Patrick's Paginated Capacity. And then once that's done, you're ready to create your first report. You're ready to create your first paginated report. These paginated reports can be created using SQL Server Data Tools or Report Builder. For this video, in the sake of brevity, I'm gonna use Report Builder. And if you guys have never designed paginated reports, stay tuned. Got some videos coming that it's gonna show you how to create your first paginated report. Um, so stay tuned to the channel for that, all right? So you can see Report Builder. I have it, you can download Report Builder from the web. Just go give a search for it. You'll find it out there if you don't already have it. And so you get Report Builder downloaded on your machine, and then you start building your report. You right click, you create a data source. Right now, right now we support a limited set of data sources. Azure SQL Database, on-premises um, SQL Server through the gateway, on-premises SQL Server, tabular models, SSAS tabular models through the gateway also. Pretty sure Azure SQL Data Warehouse works just test it before you deploy it um, if you're interested in something like that. And as you guys know, more and more data sources will be released, so stay tuned for that, all right? So once you get your data source created, you create your data source and build out your report. Again, I'm gonna show you how to do this in subsequent videos, build some reports. I'll go into more details on it, all right? Once that's done, you click save, you save your report, then you go over to your um, workspace, make sure you're in the context of your workspace. You click get data. Right now, there's no publish from the report builder. I gotta assume that as the product, you know, as this feature matures, they'll add more capabilities to make it a more seamless process for deploying these reports. Okay, and then you just choose <clears throat> files and click get. Choose the local file. And then browse to it, browse to where that file is saved. I'm gonna go right here, click OK and give it a little bit to upload that report to the service. And it's saying, hey, make sure, republish succeeded, remember to provide the credentials for your data source. So once it's uploaded, you need to go and fix your data source. Remember, if this is on-premises, if you're using SQL Server or analysis services on-premises, you will need to have the gateway configured. Got it? Okay, got it? Okay, got it. All right, click continue. And so, hey, here's my data set. It's say, hey, you have a problem on your data set. I'm gonna go ahead and configure it. And I'm gonna just put in my SQL, I'm using SQL authentication here. Go ahead and click sign in. Give it a second. Now my data source is ready to go. I'll go back to my report. And run my report. Here it goes. 
My report's rendering. Go ahead and choose something. I'll choose 2012. We'll choose all countries. We'll accept the default. Click view report. Look at this. Look at this. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Bam. Now you have that great report running directly inside of the Power BI service. So if I expand United States, you can see all the different regions or salespeople um, that are located in the United States. You have full interactivity of that report. You can export it. You can see right here, I can export this to a few options. I can download the actual RDL file if I want to. I can share this report out with other people. What? Paginated reports in the Power BI service. Boof, I've been waiting for this. What do you guys think? How, you know, using power, paginated reports today on premises, maybe you want to take a look at it in the service. You know, if you have questions, comments, thoughts, whatever it is, post it in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the channel. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give it a big thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.